Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing a PRS style kit build. It's been a while since we've done a kit on the channel, so this is gonna be a lot of fun. Here we go. Yes, welcome back to the channel, you guys. As you can see, we've got a PRS style kit in the studio. So what we're gonna do over the next couple of videos is build this up together so that in the future, if you guys wanna do a kit like this, you can see what steps are involved, how easy, how hard it's gonna be. So it should be a lot of fun. Let's get to it. Well, here's the kit. As you can see, I've stripped away the packing paper, the bubble wrap, all that kind of stuff so you can see the main elements, which of course is the neck, the body, and then the hardware bag slash electronics. It's all there and this is kind of what comes in the kit. Now this was sent into the channel by the guys from Solo Guitars, so huge thanks to those guys. And as I mentioned, this is a PRS style kit. So here's a quick look at the headstock shape. Um, yes, you can see the inspiration <laughs> where it comes from, but of course it has its own uh, headstock shape. Now, it's a mahogany neck, and hopefully you can see right there, there is the scarf joint. So that's how the tilt back on the headstock is achieved. Uh, neck profile on the kit is really nice, I gotta say. It's on the thinner side. So it does fit in the hand quite nice, so there's just sort of a, a look at how it sits in the hand potentially. So yeah, really nice mahogany neck, and I'll just flip it around here quick. So it is a glue-in kit. Now this is the first time I've done a glue-in kit, actually. Uh, all my other kits have been bolt-ons, which obviously are just dead, dead simple unless you have to do some shimming or something, which I never have on a solo kit, so that's good. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a look. You can see there's two pieces of mahogany right there, and that will sit right in here. So hopefully that joint is good. We'll take a look at that in a second, but that's just a quick look at the neck, and yeah, nice and mahogany. So let's grab the body. So here's a look at the body. Now, as you can see, hopefully it's not getting too washed out by the camera, but there is a little bit of quilt there. So when we add our color, hopefully that will start popping. But yeah, there you go. So on the back, um, we're looking at actually a two-piece body right there. Oftentimes you get a three-piece body. Let me look at the end grain here quick. Yeah, definitely just a two-piece. So that's nice. Um, it'll be interesting when, again, when we add our color and stuff like that, if hopefully this piece and this piece will soak up the, the stain <laughs> evenly. But yeah, it's all pre-routed. Uh, there is a nice arch on, on here as well. So, you know, you can definitely feel it with your hand right along this uh, center seam. It is a nice arch top. I don't know if that'll show up, but there you go. So that's the body. Um, it is a mahogany body with just a very thin uh, veneer there. So I don't know, I'll, I'll see if the camera will grab that, but yeah, the veneer is yeah, just a little paper thin layer of quilted maple. So there you guys go. And otherwise we got a giant bag <laughs> full of goodies. So this has, you know, your tuning machines, uh, stop tailpiece, all the hardware, and of course, uh, the electronics and pickups. So that's uh, kind of just a quick overview of what's in the kit. All right, you guys, let's start the build. This is always so much fun starting something new and not knowing how it's gonna end up. Now, the original plan was to use some nitro finishes. So I've got some nitro lacquer here in colors and then clear coat. Unfortunately, in the middle of winter, I just don't have the facilities to do it. You need, you know, really good ventilation, you need room temperature and, you know, you need uh, masking and all that stuff. So I'm not quite prepared to do that. I think what I'll do is hopefully do another kit in the spring where I can use these products um, with proper ventilation and good temperature and all that stuff. So what I decided to do was something much more simple. So these are dyes specifically made for guitar. So I took these three colors, just put it on a piece of old tongue and groove so I could see what they would look like. And as you can see, we've got a cherry right there beautiful red. I think that would look awesome on this guitar. Then we've got some purple, which I've never done or owned a purple guitar. So maybe that's the way I should go. Or we've got some blue. And I think that is what my actual PRS right there is. So I've, I'm leaning maybe against the blue, unless I did some sort of fade, some sort of gradient, maybe outside my skill level, but it is a kit. So there's no right or wrong. <laughs> So anyway, here's the products. Uh, if I can find them, uh, this is from Solo as well, I will link to them. So that's what the dyes are. So if you guys like the way it looks, uh, there you go. So Azure is the blue, Eggplant is the purple, 
and cherry is the red. So there you guys go. I'm still waffling what to do. One thing I do know I want to do <laughs> was kind of inspired by this guitar, which is a Valenti, a very expensive handmade guitar, but look at the back of the neck. So I do know I want to tint the neck on this kit. So that's kind of where the inspiration came from. So let's break out the dies. I'm gonna decide what color I wanna do and let's get to it. All right, you guys, let's get to it. I decided to go with Yes, eggplant <laughs> for something a little different. Uh, this stuff is so easy to use. You shake it up. Uh, there's no nauseous fumes. It's water-based. So even if you did get some on your hands, it's not a big deal. So literally all you have to do is shake it. Um, no primer coat needed or anything. The only preparation you need to do is just sand down the neck and the body a little bit, which I have done already. Um, the kit comes with a fairly decent sealer on the wood just to keep everything you know, in good condition. So a little sand on the neck and body just to get that off is all you need. And here we go, point of no return. <laughs> I've just got a little, like, a little foam brush. So you just gotta get a little bit on the foam and let's see what's gonna happen. Okay. So I wonder if I need to thin it a little bit with some, uh, some water. We'll see. Now this stuff should dry within about half an hour, which is also really awesome. So, you know, the wait times in between like coating this and actually like putting the kit together um, shouldn't be too bad. So I think, let me just show you guys on the straight angle because it does look kind of black in the monitor. Um, but yeah, it's just sort of a deep purple. And like I said, I might be able to thin it out a bit. We'll see how it dries as well. Since it is water-based, I might be able to uh, do that. I always get nervous doing this kind of stuff. Like finishing is not my jam. I should probably tape off uh, the edges there too. I never did that. <laughs> that maybe would have been a good first step, but we'll, uh, we'll just focus on the headstock here first, I think. And then I'll tape that off before going uh, down to the edges of the neck. It's like people who paint are like, dude, what are you doing? That's like first step. You got to do all the prep work. I'm too excited, so I'm just going. Okay, let's do the front face here. I'll see if I can get it a little bit, yeah, in focus for you guys. I'll just put a little bit more on here. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a really nice deep purple. Wow, that's a cool color. And I think that's really just what kind of you know, drew me to it was the fact that I've never done purple before. So now it, this, this kit, I believe does come with a cover, so I shouldn't need to get, uh, the stain all the way down in there. I'm just going to get some on the tip of the brush here and see if I can get right up into the nut there. All right. We've got the fingerboard taped off. So we are back in action. Oh man. Yeah. Really beautiful. And I do have a little water so I can kind of like, you know, if I want to do something a little bit, you know, lighter where you see a little bit more of the grains and the purples, um, I can do that. So that's what I've done there. I've just given it like that. And I think I do like a little bit of the lighter. So maybe what I'll do if I can maybe is, uh, leave it a little darker towards the edge of the headstock and just kind of fade it into a little bit more of a trans, a um, little bit of a more transparent kind of look. So anyway, I'll finish this off and we'll be back. All right, you guys, I've got the neck drying. We'll take a look at that in a second. Now I think I do want to just kind of throw caution to the wind and do a little bit of a burst. So I'm just going to start by putting a little bit of blue on here and kind of just hoping for the best. <laughs> I am like a little bit intimidated by this, but I'm just going for it. So I'm just going to kind of just paint the center section and then hopefully be able to blend the purple into there. And then just sort of have like this really bright blue, just kind of, yeah, around the edges there. I don't know, you guys. Like I said, I'm just winging it here. 
and we're gonna just hope for something cool. <laughs> That's all we can do. So I'm just gonna keep it super light. I've used a little bit of water to dilute um, the uh, azure, which is the blue uh, stain. Okay, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Man, you can already see, hopefully, uh, a little bit of that quilt start to burst. You know, when it's plain, it doesn't show show up much. But, like, man, you start putting that stain on and look at that. I got something pretty cool. All right, let's keep going. I'm just going to add a little bit more. And then, hopefully, if I can kind of keep the, the transition here um, mostly light, then when I do... Uh, the purple, all of this will just kind of fade mostly purple still. And uh, yeah, we'll see what uh, see what we can do here. This is not really creating a, a faded edge like I want to, but I'm just gonna keep going on it. Add a little bit more here. And I'm gonna just water it down a little bit more as well. The nice thing is you can always add water and it will, um, re-wet what you've already put on. So that means, um, yeah, the margin for error is quite high, which is why I, you know, chose the stain. It's just gonna be perfect for a guy like me, <laughs> who's clearly not into finishing, but uh, yeah, there we go. So as soon as we kind of wet that brush, then we can get that kind of, you can already see, hopefully, that it's a little bit uh, darker around, around there. And then uh, these edges here are starting to really kind of yeah, fade away in a nice way. Okay, so while this is still wet, I'm gonna switch colors and uh, yeah, we'll see cross fingers that I didn't make a, a huge miscalculation here. <laughs> and then we'll start adding our purple. So I'm gonna switch back to my other brush and break out uh, the eggplant. Here we go. Okay, so we got a good amount on the brush there. And I'm just gonna start, oh man, I know these are complementary colors, but I'm just hoping it's gonna, I'm just hoping it's gonna be really cool. That's all I'm doing, all I'm hoping. So I'm gonna start by just going on the outside edge and get a nice thick line. And then we're gonna start fading it into the blue. And I didn't watch any tutorials on this or anything. Like this is literally me just cracking open uh, the stains and uh, going for it. So if you guys do have tips for other people watching, well, drop them in the comments. I'm sure you guys, people who have done this before anyway, will have some tips. Okay, let me just pull it back so you guys can see where I'm working. And so far I'm not doing anything on uh, on the sides and the back. I've pretty much decided I will go just straight with straight purple on the sides and back. So all right, so let's just finish up the outside edge here. And I might want to even do the outside edge a little darker too, just as we uh, sort of create a little bit of a burst anyway. Okay, so that is it without uh, any sort of blending. Uh, looks pretty bad. <laughs> so let's, uh, I'm gonna wet my brush and just start doing some blending and see what happens here. There we go, we got a generous amount of water and we're just gonna start kind of painting it in and I want it mostly purple with just a little bit of blue in the center. So yeah, there we go, we can start to see that kind of bleeding together. And then as my brush kind of runs out, hopefully that blue will still kind of show through. Okay, that's looking better already. Okay, so I'll show, give you guys kind of a, a look here. So as you can see, the blending has started. You kind of got the deep purple on the edge and then lighter and then into the blue. So that's kind of what I'm going for. So I'm just gonna keep uh, keep plugging away here. I'm just adding water to the brush at this point. I'm not adding um, any other stain and that's sort of how we're getting the blending. 
So anyway, off we go. I will uh, pause the video. We'll be back once I'm done this step. Well, you guys, the body and the neck are both drying. I think they turned out pretty cool. I can't wait to show them to you guys. Uh, we'll look at them in a second. I'm just going to give them, yeah, about half an hour to dry here. Uh, while we're doing that, let's look at what else comes with the kit. Uh, comes with a cable. Looks very, very cheap. But if you don't have anything else, well, hey, it's nice to have. And there's also your um, truss rod adjuster. Uh, you've got your strap buttons here and hardware. So we will need to drill for that. Um, there are a little bit of soldering, a little bit of drilling in the kit, not much. So that's what, you know, if you're following along and you're doing your own build and you want to know, well, what skill level do I need? Uh, there is a little bit of drilling into the body. Thankfully, all the, the main ones for like the stop tail piece and all that stuff um, is all there. Uh, even a set of strings. So, you know, everything literally is here. Uh, for the solo kits so that you can just start you know put your put your guitar together and have it uh, ready to rock uh, there you go couple uh, knobs here let's open up and look at the electronics because this is the other area where you know you might need a little help thankfully a lot of it is pre-wired so there is some soldering that you're going to need to do um, you know to the output jack and a few things like that but thankfully like yeah switch pots everything um, pre-wired and ready to go. So that does save a lot of time. But as I mentioned, you know, there's a couple like to the output jack, which is right here, um, that you're going to need to solder. So thankfully not a lot, but there is some, just so you guys know. Uh, I like that this is all attached to uh, the outside plate as well. That's really nice. Uh, it's just some other hardware there. Let's look at the pickups. Now I've used the pickups on some of the solo kit builds, they're usually, ah, unsurprisingly, you know, pretty budget, um, very warm sounding uh, in my experience. We'll see what these ones sound like um, when we put it all together. But uh, yeah, there's a look at the humbuckers, little zebra coil action, that's pretty cool. And other than that, we got our tuning machine uh, and hardware. So screws, nuts, bolts, yep, there you go. No big surprises there. And then here's the hardware. So we've got our, see if the camera will grab that. You can do it, there you go. Two pneumatic bridge, there we go. And then we've got stop ta tailpiece. Everything's packaged so nice so that it doesn't get scratches on it and stuff. Everything's in its own thing. And then you've got your uh, posts. Obviously we'll just have to take a rubber mallet and seat that into the body when we're ready to go. Um, but yeah, there you go. Not much to it that uh, the person's gonna have to do. A couple solder points, um, some drilling for the tuning machines and for the output jack into the body and strap buttons. I think that's literally it. And then, you know, your cavity covers ready to go and everything. So there you go, comprehensive kit. Uh, let's come back and check out the neck and the body. All right, you guys, here's a look at how the whole neck turned out. I think it looks pretty cool. I'll take a close up shot for you guys. Uh, now on the stain, it says that it wouldn't cause um, the grain to rise, which means you'll have to sand it. But there are a few spots, particularly down by the heel here, where it definitely did rise up a bit and right here. So the main part of the neck, uh, I would say the stain is very good, um, but not foolproof. So I think what I'm going to have to do is take some sandpaper um, and just kind of get rid of that, you know, that rough spot on the grain here and there. Um, and then if I have to restain those sections, um, I can. That's the great thing about working with this style of stain, the water-based. So, you know, you can always touch up things or change things until you put your sealing coat on. So I don't want to have feel any roughness on this neck. I want it to be like ultra smooth. So I'm going to take some like really fine sandpaper, uh, do that. And then if I have to touch it up, I will do that. The next step for this neck is putting on the satin clear coat. So I think I'm going to wait till the evening just to make sure 100% this thing is like dried through and through, even though it says after about half an hour, it'll be dried. Then I'm going to put on my uh, clear coat here and uh, let it uh, go overnight. After that, we're going to put on the neck, but I do want to test fit this before, uh, before we move on as well. So overall, there's the neck. I think it'll look really cool with some bright um, kind of chrome tuning machines and stuff up there that'll brighten that up. And there we go, let's go check out the body. Well, here's how the body turned out after about half an hour of drying. I'll just take some close-up shots for you guys. So there you go, I, I think I'm pretty happy that I added a little blue in there. It just adds a little bit of interest. And yeah, you know, just even adding that stain really caused some of that, uh, 
the top to kind of pop out, which is really nice. And again, once we put our finishing coat on here, I think it's going to pop even more. So I have not done the sides or back. So that's the next step for me. So I'm going to just do straight dark purple uh, over the sides and the back, and then just have a little bit of that burst around there. You can see just along the edges, it's a little bit darker, and then it kind of fades up into that blue. So overall, I think I'm pretty happy. Let me just grab the neck. Yeah, so anyway, uh, let's go to the bench. I wanna test fit this to make sure that I don't have to do any sanding to the pocket or the neck um, to make it fit before I do the gluing. So let's hop over back to the bench and do a test fit. All right, you guys, let's test fit the neck and the body. As you can see, I got lots to paint and kind of clean up in there. That will all happen. But before we do, I just wanna see how this neck and this body are gonna connect. Well, that is a good sign. Wow. Okay very tight yeah great joint there so hopefully uh the guys at solo have uh taken care of all of the angles like most of the kits um so all we have to do is then is apply the glue put it in maybe put some clamps on here um so that it really really sets but before we do that i just wanted to test it before we do that oh boy yeah that's that's really in there Fantastic fit. Love that. So yes, before we do that, uh, I need to finish doing the body here, which I will do right away. And then on the neck, what I'd like to do is, uh, yeah, just test fit the tuning machines, maybe do some uh, drilling uh, that way. But those will be our next two steps. Here we go. Right. Now there was one thing I wanted to test before we got too far here. Uh, and that was what the zebra coil pickups look like. I never actually checked uh, what style of pickups uh, were included on the kit before I picked my colors. <laughs> so I just want to do a quick, you know, a quick little test and just see what they're going to look like. Uh, because I do have other pickups if I don't want to use the kit ones, but you know what? I think that'll be okay. It'll definitely give it a unique custom look like no one else has. So I think I'm gonna stick with just the stock pickups and just keep the build completely stock. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to quickly look at that. Uh, oopsies. Uh, quickly look at that before I, you know, committed to it. So I think it's going to be okay. I do like zebra coil pickups. So I think it'll be okay. Um, and yes, once we get our little uh, our uh, poly on here, it'll shine it up a little bit. Um, in terms of the overall finish and stuff. I don't mind a satin satin look, but I think just to get everything popping. Um, and I should mention that the stain that I used did not cause the grain to rise on the body here. So this all still feels very nice and smooth and beautiful. It was just a few spots on the neck that I need to correct. And uh, yeah, there we go, on to the next step. All right, we've got the headstock mocked up. As you guys can see, I've drilled and installed the truss rod cover and I've put on the tuning machines, but they are not drilled yet. So they're tightened up, so they're not going anywhere. And I've lined them up so they look, you know, pretty straight. They're never obviously going to be like this um, on the guitar, but when you're installing them, you want to just do that so that you can sort of judge the gaps between them so that they're very similar and that they're, you know, the same on both sides. So that's our next job here is to drill those out. And let's do that now. So we've got our six screws. Now I've got my drill as you guys can see, I've got the right bit on there. And then I've just got a little bit of tape to make sure I don't blow through uh, <laughs> the headstock. You wanna know, you know the depth of uh, how far you can go so that the screw will go in easy, but so that you don't blow through the, the backside of the headstock. So that's what that's all about. So here we go. Let's drill our six holes here. One, two, three. So as you guys can see, I finished up on the back and the sides. I'll just show, sort of show you how you know, it's going into the grain of the mahogany. Looks pretty good. There's a few areas I still need to touch up on. Right in the center there, there's a spot I need to kind of like clean up a little bit. But yeah, there you guys go. Back and sides. So yeah, I'll still uh, touch this up before I put the ceiling coat on. As I mentioned, I'll do that later on tonight. I think I'm gonna call the video there. We had a good day in the studio. So um, yeah, what we're gonna do in the next video is put the neck on and put all the hardware, wire up all the electronics, plug it in and take a listen. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video so far. I think it's going to look, I don't know, I think it's going to look pretty good together. So I'm excited about it. So anyway, uh, stay tuned to the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so so you can catch up uh, on part two when it drops later on this week. Other than that, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care.